Oh, Detroit. Detroit. Ah, oh, it's like, how do you feel? I know Detroit fans feeling like good and a little bad. Probably more good than bad. But still, they like, oh, we didn't lose. We didn't lose. So you you got to take what that is for what it is. But they didn't win. But they didn't lose. And the Steelers, they went to overtime with the Detroit Lions. And they didn't win. But they also didn't lose. But... Thank goodness because this keeps the Ravens atop the AFC North. And oh boy, what a week this has been. The Ravens, they get beat up on by the Dolphins on Thursday night football. Embarrassed. So then I tweeted out this morning. I said, okay, go Patriots and go Lions. And with the Patriots, I felt like they had more of a chance than the Lions did. But still, it's any given Sunday, my friends, as we know this season. And I was hoping that the Steelers would fall for the trap game. And they kind of did. Not all the way, but, I mean, they didn't win. They didn't beat the Lions. So this puts them at 5-3-1. and one. And the Lions are what? 0-8-1, oh, and one, I believe. And, boy, this game, I didn't watch it throughout. I had seen, because I was watching the Browns and Patriots, and I kept seeing highlights and all that stuff. But at the end of the fourth quarter, I was watching it in an overtime. I was like, oh, 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 overtime. Let's go. So I was like, all right, Lions, Lions got a shot. They really got a shot. And the Lions in overtime, they won a toss. They got the ball. And they were moving. They were moving a little bit. Uh, but they ended up having to punt the ball. And Steelers got it. And then they just kept going back and forth. But some of the biggest plays in overtime. One was obviously when the Lions had the ball. Um, it was third and short, and the Lions were like, all right, let's just pick up a couple extra yards. They threw a screen. I don't think it was to Khalif Frame. I forgot who it was to, but they threw a screen, and Hawkinson. Hawkinson got called for holding, and it was like, oh, man. So that backed them up, and then the field goal kicker, he, of course, he, he missed the field goal. Oh, that one hurt my heart. That one hurt my heart so bad. And then, but actually, a drive before that, when the Steelers had the ball, uh, Mason Rudolph, he had dropped back, and he hit Deontay, uh, Deontay Johnson. He hit him. Deontay Johnson moving. He like, ah. he like oh, he making people missing all that. It's like, oh, no, Lions, what are you doing? But then the Lions were like, hold up. Wait. Bop. Knock that ball right out. Fumble. And then on top of that, they recovered too. So I was like, let's go. Oh, I was so hyped, man. Uh, but we all know how that ended. And, and and they just, well, they didn't keep going back and forth. I think the Lions only had the ball twice and the Steelers only had the ball twice. Um, but it just it just seemed like things were starting to look the Steelers' way. Uh, then it seemed like things were starting to look like, every time it looked like things were looking a certain team's way, something would happen and it'd be like, oh, okay, well, there goes that. There goes that. Um, when Jared Goff, he tried to hit TJ Hawkinson in the middle of the field, Minka Fitzpatrick read it perfectly. Oh, that was a nice interception. Beautiful interception. But the Steelers got called for a defensive holding. Uh, there was another play where Mason Rudolph, he overthrew. He, 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 well, it, it, did, it did hit the tight end in the hands. I don't, I don't even remember if it was an overthrow or whatever. But anyway, Mason Rudolph threw it. The tight end jumped for it and it slipped off his fingers. And the Detroit Lions safety is right there. He's like, oh, all you got to do is catch it. The ball doesn't even have the same velocity that it had coming out of Mason Rudolph's hand because it got tipped, so it slowed down a bit. So that'll make it a little bit easier, especially in the rain. The ball comes, and then he just... And drops it. Oh, boy. Then there was a play where um, Jared Goff, where he was looking to uh, just... He threw a check down to um, DeAndre Swift. He threw it to him. DeAndre Swift, the ball's coming. He's wide open, but he literally looks up field before he catches the ball. Looks up field before he catches the ball. Oh, incompletion. And then uh, Fryermuth, oh, I always feel like I'm saying his name wrong. I'm probably him. But Fryermuth, the Steelers tight end. I would just call him that. The, the same exact thing happened to him. He's wide open in the flats. Mason Rudolph throws it to him. And right before the ball gets there, he's already looking up field. And I think a lot of players do that, in my opinion, because of the situation. And, and you got to realize this situation is like, hold up. They think it like, oh, hold up. We are not trying to lose to the, to the Detroit Lions. We're not. 
We ain't trying to lose to the, it, it can't be us. We don't want to be that first team where they get that first. Oh, no. And we try. This is our chance to take control of the AFC North. We win this game. We're in first place. We're in first place. Like, we used to be down in the dumps this season, but we, we will be in first place. Let's go, y'all. So I almost think players start pressing. And again, it's overtime. Overtime, like, this is it. It, it, ain't, no, it ain't no sixth quarter. No, this is it. Overtime, you got 10 minutes. And if 10 minutes ain't enough, you're done. You're done. Unless it was a playoff game, of course. But that's why guys start pressing. Then you look at the Lions side, and with the Lions, it's like, oh, we, we in overtime. Come on. Like, we came, we didn't come this far for nothing, y'all. We didn't come this far just to lose. Like, we lost our last eight, and we lost our last eight games in some heartbreakers. We done been through it. We done been through it. So this is our opportunity to really do something and against a good team in the Pittsburgh Steelers. So guys, they, they, they think, they, they start to overthink things and they just, they, they really want to do everything that they possibly can to make a play. So that's what I think happened on those two incompletions by both teams. But then at the very end, that last drive, man, Mason Rudolph, he was connecting with people. He was hitting his receivers, receivers getting the yak. We're getting that yak. Even um, there was one play where, oh, I forget. I don't think it was Deontay Johnson. I think it was um, 14, the uh, the kick return. Oh, I can't not, uh, the punt return, I mean. Is it Ray Ray McLeod? I think it was him where um, Mason Rudolph hit him, and he started getting blocks. He cut across the field and cut up a little bit. Then he ended up running out of bounds. I'm like, oh, it was so frustrating, man. It was so frustrating. And then uh, my favorite player of the game. Because it, it, it saved it. It saved the Steelers from winning. Mason Rudolph didn't do anything wrong. He threw it to his tight end. Tight end was so close to the, 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 the sidelines. He was so close to getting out of bounds because Steelers didn't have any timeouts left at that point. And then the Detroit Lions, the cornerback, or safety, whatever he was, hit him. Ball comes out. And then on top of that, the ball came out, and it, and it was so close to the, to the sideline, but it stayed in bounds, and it stayed still. And I was like, yeah. I said, get it, get it, get it. And then Trey Flowers, he recovers it. And I was like, let's go. Oh, man. I, I didn't even we, – we went to the Ravens and Dolphins game a couple of days ago in Miami, and we weren't even doing that, that loud of screaming as we were doing in overtime in this game. Especially because Ravens were playing pretty stale all night. But anyway, I was just like, yes, let's go, man. Come on. And then I, I knew like it was only like eight seconds left, I think. And I was hoping that maybe something crazy could happen. But, it, but I, I was uh, content uh, with the tie. Longest Steelers didn't win. That was my biggest thing. Longest Steelers didn't win. And they didn't. The Detroit Lions, they came through. They, they do for one. They, they, they do for one. Um... That guy, uh, Dan Campbell, I think that's the Lions head coach name. Uh, um, no, not Dan Campbell. Yeah, I think it is Dan Campbell. He, um, I know they've been talked about a lot, but th there was one presser that he gave us weeks ago where he, he was talking about just how much, because the Lions, they had lost a close one. It wasn't the Ravens game. It was a different game. But they had lost a close one, and they lost several of those this year. But the way that he was speaking and you could tell he just loved his guys, and he just felt so bad for his players, man. He felt so bad. He started getting emotional, and I'm watching, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm starting to get a little emotional, too. But this is, it, this is a start. This is a start. I'm not sure who the Lions play next week, but this game right here, it could work one of two ways. And for the Steelers as well. For the Lions, they could look at it like, all right. We didn't lose, but we didn't win. But we, we we took it to those Steelers. We brought them right down to the wire. We, 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 ain't, we didn't even bring them right down to the wire. We brought them past the wire. We brought them past the wire, and but we just couldn't finish the deal. But they didn't either, so hey, let's, let's take that, and then they could build off of that. Or this game could have drained them so much to where next week they just come out flat. So this way, coaching is everything. Preparation is everything. This week Now for the Steelers I also do not know Who they play next week I don't have my phone On me right now But anyway Steelers Same thing This game They could be like Man we 5-3-1 we and one. Man we got a tie With the uh, With the Lions uh. 
And I think, I actually think way back, there was a tie in a really, really good game between the Falcons and the Steelers. Mike Vick Falcons and the Steelers. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure that was, it was a, it, or the game went to like two overtimes. Maybe three, but two for sure. But anyway, um, y'all let me know if y'all remember that. And if I'm even thinking of the right game, I think I am. But anyway, um, the Steelers could take this game and be like, man. We didn't, we, we didn't beat the Lions. We didn't lose to them, but we didn't beat them. It almost feels like a loss to us. And they could have their heads hanging low and whatnot and go into the next game like, man, are we like, like doubting themselves? Like, are we even really that? Now they didn't have their quarterback, so that's big. That's big. And they lost T.J. Watt. Hopefully it's nothing serious, but that's also huge. Um, but they, it, it's, it's all about the bounce back now. It's all about the bounce back for both teams. Um, now, with, with Steelers, they have a big advantage because, again, they're 5-3-1. And, um, and they were missing their starting quarterback. So And then they lost their, their star defensive player. Now, with T.J. Watt, when I saw that he got injured, the first thing that thought to my mind, that f- the first thing that came to my mind, excuse me, this is why go- guys hold out. This is why they hold out. This is the reason. This is why, and he was smart for that. NFL is a business. You... You got to try to make as much money as you possibly can. And it stands for not for long. Injuries happen like that. They can change your career like that. They can change a player like that. They can change everything instantly. Instantly. So I remember this offseason. They were saying, oh, TJ Watt, he showed up at like training camp and stuff, but he wasn't participating in anything. He wasn't doing drills or anything like that. They said he was just standing around talking to the players and whatnot. And the Steelers were like, oh, we ain't going to pay you. So I want to get paid. We ain't going to pay you. I want to get paid. We ain't going to pay you. I want to get paid. They paid him. He won. And we'll see what type of injury it is. Like I said, hopefully it's nothing long term. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Um, but that's that's why guys do it. So I'm not, When somebody's holding out, even if, it, I, if, even if it's a Ravens player, because y'all know I'm a fan of the Ravens. Even if it's, a, if, if it's a Ravens player, it doesn't really happen with Ravens players that much. But when, when, when players hold out, I don't get mad at them at all. No pro- Oh, no, no, no. You, you get your money. You get your guaranteed. You get whatever it is that you're trying to get. You get it. Because especially when they like they trying to get that second contract or maybe even a third contract, whatever it might be. When they're trying to earn some more money, they're trying to get some more money, I got no problem with them holding out. Especially if, like, if they're in the last year of that deal or something and they're they in contract talks or whatever. That, what? So, yeah, I get it. So, the Ravens. They barely, ooh, barely, 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 barely. They are still atop the AFC North. Oh, boy. Doesn't feel like it, especially after that beatdown by the Dolphins. Ooh, Dolphins just, oh, they took care of us. Nasty. And it's so sad that the, the only touchdown that we got came from being helped by the refs. Oh, now, in this game, it was looking like the Steelers, it was looking like the Steelers were getting ready to have a taste of their own medicine from last week when the refs were like, hey, Pittsburgh, here you go. You, oh, you need to win? Don't worry, we got you. We're going to have you working a whole lot less. We got you. Trust us. It was looking like it was going to be the same thing that with the Lions, but on the flip side, where the, the refs were going to help the Lions a little bit, but nah, they, uh, they, they cut that off. But this is a really, really, really good game. Really, really, really fun game. Really fun game. So, again, thank you, Lions. Uh, like I said, Ravens are barely at the top of AFC North. It is a close division um, y'all know AFC North be bringing it. They bring it. They bring it all day. So, Bengals, they want a bye week. Browns, they were pretty much on a bye week because they sure ain't show up. Uh, they, they, I mean, every, they left everything back in Cincinnati. They left everything back in Cincinnati last week. They were like, man, Odell, who? We ain't worried about no Odell, man. They go out there and whoop those Bengals. But then they, they come out in this game flat. So our football, NFL, it's week to week, man. It is week to week. What you did last week is cool. What you did last week is nice. But it doesn't matter anymore. It, that was last week. So 17 games. It's, it's a stretch. It's a stretch. But it is also uh, known that it's a marathon. It's, a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's a long distance run. So anyway, this was a really good game. I enjoyed it. I appreciate it. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to any Steelers Alliance fans that are watching. Appreciate y'all taking the time to watch. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. And again, Ravens, they still atop the AFC North. Just by the hair of their chinny-chin-chin. So next week against the Bears, 
they they better not come out flat. They better not come out like they came out in the Dolphins. Well, they really better not come out how they've been coming out all season long, starting off all slow and all that. Because, again, you give a bad team confidence, it's no good. It does you no favors, my friend. Team, keep it clean. We out.